And so since I was nearby, I was the one who was uh, kind of tapped on the shoulder to, uh, to work with Lance. And uh, the very first time that uh, I, I saw him, I actually went to his house and uh, I was thinking, wow, all right, cool. Another libertarian, you know, really, really nice guy, but, you know, not a computer guy, which is kind of weird because, you know, most of us are pretty tech savvy. Um, then there was a long period of time where, you know, I didn't really see Lance. And then we got to, um, in October of last year, I asked the question in the Cobb County affiliate, well, you know, hey, we're, we're going to be coming up on a special election for our SPLOS. What are we going to do? So everybody said, well, just call Lance. I said, Lance, like the same Lance that I met a year ago? Yeah, 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 that Lance. No, just, just bring him to the meeting. We'll get started. So uh, little did I know that Lance was going to bring me in uh, as part of the Cobb County Taxpayers Association Advisory Board. Uh, as we started working to fight this boss in Cobb County. Uh, one of the reasons that I won't be able to make it to Gwinnett County for Will on Tuesday is because we have an election night party at Rocco's and Marietta, uh, where we will hopefully be celebrating with our cigars out on the patio the defeat of a 20% uh, or the continuation of a 20% tax increase, giving ourselves a tax cut and giving us the uh, lowest sales tax in the state of Georgia. Uh, without any further ado, Oh, uh, one more thing. Um, I wanted to make sure that everybody knew Lance uh, is a former member of the Reagan administration. Uh, he worked in the, uh, I believe it was public policy. Um, but uh, one of my good friends, I uh, can't wait till we get to go to a Braves game this, this spring, Lance Leverson from the Cobb County Taxpayers Association. game that we're thinking about going to is probably going to be against the Mets. I hope to have another victory, but it won't be for the Braves, it'll be for the Mets. <laughs> because uh, people who know me, the first thing they know about me is that I'm a Mets fan, and secondly, a libertarian. Uh, you know, when Brett first asked me to talk to you about the Georgia, uh, talk to you before, before your group, Georgia State Libertarian Party, I was naturally pleased and flattered, but when he told me it was scheduled for today, I asked him somewhat facetiously, uh, if you could reschedule the convention for next week. And my reason for that is that that would have been an excellent opportunity to report back to you on how we want a smashing victory in Cobb County to defeat, to defeat the special purpose local option sales tax, or SPLOS. Unfortunately, for the purpose of this discussion, that election will not just take place, as Brett mentioned, until Tuesday, March 15th. Nevertheless, there is enough to talk about about what we have done and assuming that we are successful to share some important object lessons for how libertarians can and should work with others to accomplish shared goals and objectives. So first let me give you a brief outline of our campaign. It started in earnest in October of last year when we got wind of the fact that the Cobb County Commissioners were planning to put a six-year extension of the current SPLOS on the ballot for voter approval in March of this year. Around that time, I was, I was interviewed by a local paper and an article appeared announcing that a uh, group gathers ammunition to defeat SPLOS. And in the article was a brief one-line blurb that we were holding an organizational meeting at a local library. To my pleasant surprise, over 40 people showed up, which turned out to be a standing room only meeting, which included members of the local Tea Party and, and an elected official. That response told me that there was a deep-seated grassroots opposition that simply needed to be mobilized. With that meeting, we had a membership base to work with, and we raised some seed money. Our next step was to build a coalition, so I started attending the weekly meetings of the Georgia Tea Party, which regularly has over 100 people show up and has a membership base of over 2,000 people. I also pitched the Cobb County LP to join the coalition, and within a couple of weeks, we had three organizations which were on record as opposed to the SPLOS and we began showing up at regularly scheduled county commissioner meetings where we spoke out against it. At all of these meetings, people speaking against this boss significantly outnumbered proponents, and our opposition was regularly reported by the print and electronic media. Consequently, the commission kept delaying the vote on this boss and kept whittling it down from a six-year to a five-year, and finally to a four-year spot. And they voted in December, just days before the deadline, to get it on the March ballot. 
now that it was on the ballot, we had our work cut out for us. We got numerous op-eds published. We got a bunch of letters to the editors published. And we went about the hard work of raising money so that we could print and distribute brochure, brochures and lawn signs. The most expens expensive and difficult fundraising task was getting enough money for lawn signs. But finally, uh, in early February, we raised enough money to print a thousand of these Ask the Tax signs. They're kind of nice. You like them? <laughs> and I must tell you that my organization needed and got some much needed help uh, from a printer who provided a $1,000 in-kind contribution for the lawn signs and several hundred dollars from the Georgia Tea Party. In the meantime, we kept, uh, we kept members in our organization, which now includes about 100 people, engaged by holding bi-weekly meetings. Uh, the next major milestone in the campaign was holding a d debate between myself and the chairwoman of the pro spots organization. Uh, this, this debate took place at our initiative where we invited them to debate us and communicated our invitation to the media. It wouldn't have looked good if they had refused, so on February 23rd, we participated in what I would call the great debate. At the hour and a half long debate, an audience of over 200 people showed up at the county commissioner's chambers, and we outnumbered proponents in the audience by about three to one. Moreover, it was cable cast live by the county's cable channel, and now appears on our website, votenomarch15.com. That's March, vote no, march 15com and it's also on our one site. Uh, some of the other highlights of our campaign include being interviewed, I was interviewed by Den the Denny Schaefer Radio Show, which is broadcast on 9.20 a.m. Uh, we have participated in, in placard waving demonstrations at major intersections, which have received major pickup by the newspapers. We've distributed thousands of brochures door to door like this one put out by the Tea Party. Uh, we've attended numerous political events such as the County GOP Precinct Caucus, and just today I was at their county convention where we distribute literature and signs. Thousands of robocalls using the voice of Bob Barr has gone out and continues to go out as we speak. And finally, we will cap off our campaign tomorrow afternoon with a, what we call the Rock the Splotch Rally at one o'clock at the Square in Marietta, which will include live music, speakers from all the coalition organizations, including a new member of our coalition, Americans for Prosperity, and, and Assuming when I say assuming we have good weather, that's in my prepared March. We're going to have great weather. Uh, I'm anticipating a large turnout, and lots of media coverage. The media has been giving us a lot of attention, and we've been communicating the various member organizations to get their people out. So we think we're going to do well. I'd also like to actively encourage you to attend, even if you uh, even if you don't live in Cobb County. Uh, it's a chance for you to stand up for less government, uh, less government spending, less taxes, and it will be a great time. And and finally, we are doing a major advertising list the day before the election. I can't tell you what that is because I don't want the opposition to know what I've got in mind. Uh, I can tell you now, but you know the old saying, I'd have to kill you. Uh, I'm proud to say that we've been able to, to do this with less than $2,500 in cash and in-kind contributions as opposed to the latest campaign disclosure report from the ProSploss people of over $233,000. That amounts to us being outspent by almost 100 to 1, and that's scary. But as I said to a reporter when the report came out, all the king's horses and all the king's men won't be able to put this sloss back together again. <laughs> that's because we <laughs> That's because we have the people on our side. People who care about the future of our country and are willing to stand up and be counted against the greedy, self-serving spending interests that are trying to bankrupt this country for their immediate short-term gain. Which brings me to the object les lesson of this effort and what it can mean for freedom in the libertarian movement. You know, I've been a libertarian for many, uh, for many since 1972, which is probably before a lot of you were born. And I first worked as a volunteer in the, liberta in the libertarian campaign in 1973. And I have to say that I am disappointed in how much progress or lack of progress we have made in all these years. You may not like to hear this, but we have yet to reach any kind of critical mass in the American political scene. Our numbers remain small, and while our ideas have widespread influence in academia, business, and the media, as a political party, we have not made much headway. 
Part of the problem is that we are drawn to politics for the purpose of achieving. We are not drawn to, to uh, uh, politics for the purpose of achieving political power. That whole idea is anathema to us. Our purpose is to achieve political liberty and take power away from the politicians and special interests and return it to the individual where it belongs. And being a rather opinionated <coughs> lot, we don't have much stomach for working with people who don't agree with us. Uh, but as I think this boss campaign points out, we, we need and indeed we must work with people who don't buy our entire political philosophy. And even with our own ranks, there's, uh, there's plenty of room for disagreement. But just to give you an example from my own personal experience with this boss, I am not, to put it mildly, a religious person. And I also favor an open borders with borders policy when it comes to immigration. Therefore, attending weekly Tea Party meetings which open and close in prayer sometimes even with hands held, is not something I'm real comfortable with. But I do it, not the prayer part, but I go to the meetings. Uh, because without them, I don't think we'll be able to defeat this boss. And on immigration, I just keep my mouth shut and use occasions like this one to speak my mind. Thus, the problem as I see it is that as Libertarian Party members, we are not as willing as I would like to see us get outside of our comfort zone and spend more time discussing, and we spend more time discussing politics amongst ourselves, and precious little time and effort reaching out to, the, uh, to other people with, with, on issues that we agree. You know, I call it the echo chamber syndrome. Yet when we build relationships with others outside our movement, we not only can win some significant victories, but we expose non-libertarians to the human face of libertarianism. And in so doing, we get a chance to expose them to ideas and people they like and respect. That is how we win friends and influence people and events. And you know something? There's a whole lot of people in this great country of ours who are not formally part of our movement, but who have a great reverence and sympathy for our ideals. I saw this firsthand in the fall of 2009 when I joined with hundreds of thousands uh, at a great Tea Party rally on the steps of the nation's capital. These, people, these are people who revere the founders and the true meaning of the Constitution, and know full well that our government is on the wrong track and are willing to organize and fight for our heritage and our birthright as Americans. So my advice to you is to explore working with organizations that don't have the label libertarian in their name. There's a powerful movement afoot in our country to take back our government and return it to the ideals upon which it was founded. I invite you to join with them as I believe I have done in my own small way by taking on the Cobb County Splost. Let me make one final comment about the Splost. My organization, the CCTA, is primarily the work of three libertarians, myself, Brett Bittner, and David Staples. But when it comes to the Splost, we don't wear the LP uh, label on our sleeves, or anywhere else for that matter. We focus on what we have in common with conservatives, a desire for less government, lower taxes, and fiscal responsibility and accountability. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to you today. Uh, if there's any time left, I would welcome taking any questions. Uh, but before I do that, I want to uh, renew my membership of the Libertarian Party of Georgia. Yeah. So if you'll take my check, uh, I might not say how much it is. <laughs> respond to the, the, the cruel and unkind remarks that Brett made about my uh, IT skills. Uh, you know, what Brett brings to the table is uh, his IT skills. Uh, what I bring to the table is brilliant debating skills. So you, you decide for yourself which is more important. <laughs> Thank you. Now, really, if there are some time for questions. Yeah, absolutely. If there is any questions, I, I think, I hope this has been a learning uh, uh, talk for you, and uh, I'd be glad to expound on anything I've said here. Uh, Mr. Mont, a nice bike bow tie, man. Yeah? Oh, I like that. <laughs> uh, is your, is the debate that you had, is that online? Is it on the website? Great question. I probably should have uh, emphasized that. The website is votenomarch15.com. Also, the radio interview that I had with Danny Schaefer's on there. And all of our press release and uh, op-eds and articles uh, are also on there as well. And oh, I didn't get a chance to uh, uh, pitch for money. Um, you know, we're coming down to the wire. Uh, as I mentioned, we're, we've got, you know, we're going up against the political machine of about a quarter of a million dollars. 
Uh, we're having this huge, what well, hope to be a really successful tax rally tomorrow, and we're gonna try to raise some, some money from the audience there. We do have some very good specific purposes by which we can use more money at the last minute. It would be tragic if we lost this. We lost it in 2005 by 114 votes out of 40,000 casts. Um, I could get into you know, whether or not I think we're gonna win this time. Uh, there's some polling data that indicates that's not gonna be the case, but the way I look at it, and we'll see how it goes, but I think we've got a, a base of about 20,000 people. We've got much greater awareness and involvement by other groups, like I mentioned in my talk. Uh, so I'm optimistic that we're gonna that we're gonna win. Um, how much uh, I don't know. Early voting was rather high. It was over 6,000 votes, and most of those people are retired or unemployed people. Um, so uh, I think that's going to give us a little bit of a bump. So I'm optimistic, but we do need help. Um, by the way, I've got a few lawn signs in my car, so. Uh, you know, before this uh, convention is over, if you want to see me and get a lawn sign, I, I can do that for you. Uh, come to the rally. It's going to be fun. I've got a killer of a speech prepared. It's going to be awesome. Uh, any other questions? One other question. We had come up with a talk in the past of town. What was the, the purpose of this sloss? Sloss. They were saying, this isn't an educational sloss. Is this, you know, what were the supposed benefits that the people are going to get. And do you think that if it wasn't, if it's not educational, do you think that's helping you in your fight against it versus? Are you saying that what they're saying is that their campaign is based upon education? No, I'm saying what, what type is this? What are they going to use those funds for? Okay, the funds are going to be used for transportation, infrastructure, parks and rec, uh, It's not an educational spot. It's just a county, a countywide spot. So it's parks and recs. It's uh, uh, in infrastructure. Uh, one of the things that we pointed out in this spot, which I think is a very, very powerful message that we got across, especially in the debate, if you see it, is that this thing is full of fluff and wasteful spending. Two million dollars for a light rail study, uh, new uh, uh, concession stands, and new uh, uh, scoreboards in 21 county parks. Uh, perfectly good. They're perfectly usable. And one of the county, one of the parks they're talking about is only seven years old. Uh, they're talking about the water features in a park. They're talking about improving a dog run. Uh, they're talking about uh, skate parks. I mean, in this economy, to be suggesting that we spend our hard-earned tax dollars in that kind of frivolous spending when people are struggling to meet their foreclosures, when they're out of work, uh, when economic growth has come to a standstill, not only in Cobb County, but throughout the state and the country. Uh, it's, it's obscene for them to be asking for this money in this way at this time. It's a follow-up. So you think Isn't there anybody else who's got that? <laughs> 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 they don't have to take no, I, you got good questions, so I'll take them. But, but do you think that's why you've had such a good reception? Uh, towards fighting these things versus if they were saying they're going to use it to build a school or, or something like that? School, I mean, I've not fought a school boss yet, and I guess that's maybe on my agenda, depending upon what happens on Tuesday. It's, it's, it's harder to a win in a school boss because it's for the kids, okay? And it's for maintaining government schools, which is absolutely the wrong way to go. We should starve that beast. And, uh, and, and, and bring back education. Uh, I, think the, I think the economic arguments that we make, uh, there's a lot of waste in, in uh, county government, and so our argument is said like, yeah, there may be some, some needs that need to be addressed in this SPLOS, but we need to squeeze out the waste uh, in county government to find out if there's enough money to take care of those things without having a, a a county kind of SPLOS. There's also a lot of reform that we would like to see in the SPLOS law. Uh, fractional percentage uh, SPLOS. A requiring, and this is really important, uh, a requiring that uh, SPLOS votes take, take place during the general election. Uh, I didn't mention that the county is spending $400,000 to hold this special election. And the way I view that, that's a $400,000 contribution from the taxpayer to the pro SPLOS side. In fact, I want to show you something else. The opposition is putting out this kind of, kind of sort of semi-slick brochure. It's 100% paid for 
by the taxpayer, but legally they can get away with it because it doesn't say in the brochure, vote yes. But it is pure, pure propaganda, and I think that we also need to look at the law as to what we do. I want to tell you else about this money that they're getting, this 233000 $150,000 of it comes from community improvement districts which are supported by the taxpayer. And the way they get away with that one is they say, we're doing educational outreach. Their educational outreach is robocalls would say, if you knew that this SPOS was going to go towards upgrading the 911 system, would you vote for the SPOS? Now, is that education? That's not education. That's advocacy. And that represents a tiny, tiny fraction of, of what the total SPOS bill is of about $600 million over four years. There are other funding sources to take care of, you know, things of safety and, you know, improving safety. I mean, that's, that's a, a, a kind of a legitimate role for government, although they've gone a little bit too far with, um, uh, with the TSA. But uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, great. Sir? Yeah, we actually bought a SPOS a couple years ago. We had the city administrator um, actually on company taxpayer time, um, giving educational SWAS presentations at all these fancy restaurants downtown where all the improvements were going to be. Uh, and you know, we went to one, and it's, by law, he is not supposed to be lobbying for the SWAS being a, someone who directly benefits from the free taxpayer money. Uh, now, what is the penalty of that, and how can we prove it, and how can we start just like the brochure. Okay, let me. Supposed to be doing it. What happens if they do it? Well, <laughs> well, they, they're going to do it, but as long as they legally, as long as they don't say vote yes in any of their literature, they just say here are the benefits of it, and they couch it in a number of different terms and in different ways. They can uh, get away with this type of thing, but that's one of the things we need to do in in reforming the SPOS law is 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 more strictly. Uh, I'll be right with you, Doug. Uh, more strictly uh, defining what they can communicate. Uh, and this is another thing talking about working with the Tea Party. The Tea Party has a federal, ta uh, federal uh, a task force that works on federal legislation. They've got a Gold Dome task force that works on state legislation. So through that group, after this election is over, we are going to uh, hammer out an agenda of SPLOS law reform. And I could do that just with CCTA, but with the backing of the Tea Party, we can have much more success because they have relationships that we don't have we with sitting with sitting members of the legislature. We, we actually went on it on our own, so we were, and it's very it put us in that. You got a tea party? You know, do you have a tea party in your county? Tea party went around because it's going on because Bush is still so Okay, this is yeah. Well, okay, but uh, yeah. The, 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 the thing was, is we we felt like we could not come out against him speaking on behalf of this because it's a freedom of speech. You should be able to speak on behalf of something, no matter if you're paid by the city or not. Well, so the spot us a, a, as a libertarian, it put us in a weird position to, to say, no, you're supposed to be shutting up about this, but, you know, the, the, law, the law states, the law states that once a SPOS election has been called, then county commissioners who vote on putting it on the ballot cannot speak for or against it. But I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you that the chairman of the county commission uh, is, um, I can't prove it, but I mean, come on. Uh, he's working behind the scenes to organize and to make connections with the CID and this uh, uh, Citizens for Bankrupting Our Future organization, which is, um, <laughs> uh, 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 that's going to be one of my lines in the speech tomorrow at my tax rally, so uh, you know, you got a preview on that. <laughs> Doug, Doug. Well, I wanted to kind of answer the question a little bit that's for. 2003, we beat the spots down in Clayton County. 2004, they came back with it. So the deal is, you have to beat it every year. Once they win, they get it five years. Well, they started using some tactics we considered illegal. One of them was having school teachers and librarians hand out pro spots. They can hand out a generic thing that says, if the, if the spot passes, you get swimming pools and, and extra teachers and paid roads. But they cannot say vote yes. Well, they messed up and put vote yes literature in the library. And they also put vote yes on a website. We took them to, we filed an ethics complaint. Mark Mosley and I went to court. We won. The mayor, uh, the ex mayor of Morrow was found guilty by $200 individually, $200 for these uh, pro spots group. He had to pay the fine of $400.
but they got to keep the $250 million. Yeah, I was about to say, is that but, what I mean? But at the end, what well, our goal was. Kind of like the was sunshine to, law type thing. What our goal was was to make these guys scared of breaking law going forward. So we went ahead and went all out with it. But the deal was, he could go out and tell people, we we'll promise you, I think he played with six swimming pools, uh, 300 miles of paved roads. And that was like 10% of the spots. Mm -hmm. And there was a bunch of other clubs, but they were using that as that, that carrot. But we watched him, and we found it, we took pictures, we got evidence, and we went down to the ethics uh, committee and filed a complaint, and we won. But it was, you know, $400 for a $250 million. Well, okay. Let me say this. I think that we, we did exactly the right thing. Um, you know, obviously it didn't stop them from raising your taxes by $250 million. But if they are in violation of the law, then they uh, hurt their credibility and reputation with the voter because they're working in an underhanded way. They're working illegally. And when the, the campaign disclosure report came out that $150,000 was coming from CIDs, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of coverage on that. And uh, I'm hoping that that might resonate with the voters saying, you know, these guys, I just don't like the way they're playing, and I want to vote against the SPLOS. I heard, I saw another hand in the back, and then that's it. One more question. Any more? You had your hand up. Yeah, I was trying to get press attention. So. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to go? Okay, listen. Thanks a lot, guys.